Let's go into the Word of God. Uh, Luke chapter 2, I believe, is where we're going. Oh, my land, sister, I cannot read that. Oh, my goodness. Here, oh, I cannot read that either. It's all right. We'll try it. Okay? Put us off the background in the back. Here we go. For those, while they're working on that, while they're working on the, that background for blind people like myself, um, this message came to me about three months ago. And for those of you that were here, I preached it for general conference accidentally. Oh, yes. Stay focused up here. Okay. I preached it at general conference on Friday night accidentally. Okay. And I wasn't supposed to preach, but because we didn't have enough preachers to show up, I went ahead and stepped in and preached that night. And I was asked if I would re-preach this message. Not because it was a good message, but because there was something in there that we needed to get and that we possibly might not have gotten it. And I was asked to slow down just a little bit because I was under a time frame. I told my other preachers, I said, you've got 15 minutes, use those 15 minutes, and that's all you get. And I tried to stay within the same time frame. Just because it's my church, it doesn't matter, it's still God's, Amen. God's, that's all right? right? So here we go, here we go. Oh, I, that's all right, I'm gonna do my best, just to stay where we're at. All right. And it came to pass, my title today is simply, Stop Washing Your Nets. Okay. All right, Stop Washing Your Nets. Okay. And it goes like this, Luke chapter 2. Is this my mic or am I blowing too hard or do I need this lip on? Anyway. And it came to pass that as the people passed, pressed, upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genereset. Genereset is a place or a garden of riches and a fertile or a fertile region. Okay? So we're in a place where it's very fertile, life is going good, things are happening, so on and so forth. Okay? So that's what Genereset means. Verse number two, and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. Thing makes a difference or not, but it seems like I'm breathing awfully heavy in this mind. Yeah. Praise God. I think that we're good to go, Brother Dave. Praise the Lord. And saw so two ships standing by the lake. Yeah, that's much better. Thanks. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of them. Who entered it? Jesus. The ships, which was Simon's. And prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Right. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets. Your nets. Right. <clears throat> what was the scripture for that? I missed it. I'm sorry. Uh, your nets for a, for a drought. Man, I could go a long ways with this drought word, but we'll yeah. just stay with focus where we're going. Verse 5. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Let me simply say this. There is somebody under the sound of my voice that has toiled their whole life, and they have come up empty-handed. I don't know if it's someone in a ministry. I don't know if it's something that you expected out of life and it has not showed up. I don't know if it's a spouse. I don't know. All right? But regardless of what it is, you need to understand that God still got you where you're at. That's right. Yes, he does. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Say that again, Brother Ron. I will let down... The net. Say it again. I will let down the net. You need to let this sink in, all right? Okay. Verse number six. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net 
break their net. Their net. Singular or plural? Net. Singular. Net. They beckoned unto their partners. partners. There you go, sister. That, that, that's exactly right. Partners. Partners. You need partners in church. That's right. Which were in the other ship that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to seek. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And so they all, it was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. And it came to pass, when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face, and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make him clean. I went through the whole paragraph because I didn't want to just stop at one point. Father, we appreciate you today, and we thank you for your greatness Amen. and your love and your, your, your wonders of life. Amen. And I just want to say thank you. And we pray that you would touch this message today, God. Thank you. And let it grab a hold of our attention and our ears in the name of Jesus. Praise God. And the church say amen. Amen. And you may be seated. And I want it, I, I, Brother Jerry, I just want to say thank you for visiting us today. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'm gonna, Jesus, we know that Jesus was walking down the lake called Genereset, right? Right. Yeah. And we know what the word Genereset means. And Jesus encountered Simon. Mm -hmm. And Simon was washing his nets. Washing his nets. Plural. Right? Right. He had taken his nets off of his boat. And he was washing them, all of them. What washing your nets simply means is this. Simon was tired. He had toiled all night. Right. <laughs> he had been fishing all night, not just himself, but with others. Right. He was tired. Simon is on his way home. Right. Simon thought that he was done. He had worked all night, and Simon wanted to quit. Thank you, Brother Dave. I appreciate that so much. So oftentimes, we can be tired of life, and we want to quit and go home. Enough is enough. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm tired of where I've been in life because it seems like that the sinner or the new saint in church gets more than what I get from the Lord. Stay with me. Oftentimes we see what goes on in other people's lives. But what we don't see, thank you Holy Ghost, Amen. what we don't see is what God has kept us from all of the years of serving Him. We don't give him the credit. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost up here today. We don't give God the credit of saying, you know what? That was the train that ran off the tracks and could have killed us and hit us. That was the apple that fell out of the tree that could have fallen on my head and killed me. All we see with our eyes is what God is doing for the sinner or for the new saint. We fail to see what God has done for us all of the years that we have served him. God, why don't you bless me like you bless them? Why don't you do this for me the way you do for them? Why don't you give me a new car like you gave her a new car? Why don't you send me someone like you sent them someone? You're tired. You've been here before. 
You're on your way home. You don't want to do this anymore. You don't want to fight the fight anymore. You're sick and tired of watching other people be blessed and you don't get blessed. When the reality of it is, is that you are so blessed. Yes, we are. That's right. And that if you want to quit, listen, Simon's spirit has been broken. He has removed his spirit and he is now washing his nets. That's right. It's time to go home. I'm done fishing for the night. I have toiled my whole life in ministry. I have prayed my whole life for my family. I have prayed my whole life and fasted my whole life, and I see no results. The results are is they still have a today. The results are is that we have not buried our kids yet. The results are is that the blessings of the Lord are still upon our kids and our family. The blood is still applied to us. You have yet still a mouth where you can rebuke and you can uh, push back the darknesses of hell. So you can, what we can do oftentimes is we can leave a situation spiritually and our bodies still be there. That's right. That's right. And oftentimes our bodies are the ones that take the beating. Simon is done for the night and is washing his nets early in the morning. Simon's, a sign of washing his nets, was a sign of giving up. Giving up. I'm done. I don't want to be here anymore. My job was to be a fisherman, and I have failed at night. I needed to make a providing for my family, and I've come up empty-handed. My house has been repossessed. My car has been repossessed. I've lost my job, and I'm sick and tired of being here. Giving up is, 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 is life's disappointments. It's too late. Uh, uh, giving up is unfair results. Giving up is a drought in your life. Giving up is knowing or having uncertain times. Giving up is giving up on your job when you need to stand up and be a leader. Giving up on your marriages. Giving up. It's too late for my life to be affected by and for the ministry of God. I'm too fat. I'm too thin. I'm too short. I'm too tall. Giving up on your goals is what Simon was really saying. And really when we look back on it, we are just like Simon giving up on life. We give up on our dreams. We give up on our kids. We give up on our family. We give up on God. We give up on church. We give up on our finances. We give up on waiting for God on what he's got for us in our life. We give up on our ministry. We give up on life. We give up on people because they've hurt us. And I don't want anything to do with them because they just don't know when not to say the right or wrong thing. We give up on the word. We give up on miracles. We give up on our prayer life. We give up on hope. Nobody loves you. You're alive, but you quit. I just don't want to do this anymore. <coughs> See, this is where Simon was at. He was in a place in his life where he was frustrated and aggravated because it probably was not the first night that he came up empty-handed. Right, right. And oftentimes when we look back over our lives, we can sympathize with Simon because we can think, you know what? My marriage is not going where it needs to go. My job is not going where it needs to go. My life should be further than what it is. And it's not there yet. 
But you're still arriving, so don't give up on God. Amen. Giving up on your dreams and, and, and your efforts are of no avail because you don't work it like you should have. And the results were less than you expected. In other words, if you would go back and look back over your life and you start revamping and reevaluating your life and redoing things, your next day will be better than yesterday was. Amen. Well, I failed to read the word this week. Well, okay, let's start over and do it this week. We failed to pray today because I just don't see the results of the prayers. I don't see the word coming to life. So what good are you, God? What good is reading and fasting and praying? Because I don't ever see the results. The results are, is that Jesus one day came down the lake and was looking for Simon. Keep on doing the things that you know that are right, because God will eventually show up. Even when you think your life is over, even when you think that you've tied the last knot at the end of your rope and that's all you have to hang on to, God is going to be there. Amen. He's going to. So Jesus shows up one day and he says, Simon, I got a challenge for you. What is it? Wait, hold it. Wait a minute. You're challenging me. That's right. You're, you're, you're challenging. This is our attitude sometimes. You're challenging me. You are a carpenter's son. What do you possibly know about fishing? There is nothing you can tell me about my life that I don't already know. You know, if you would just stand still just for a few moments and wait on God, instead of doing things your way, maybe things would be different. So Jesus challenges Simon, and notice I have not called him Peter yet. He is still Simon. And he says, Simon, here, I got a challenge for you. Yeah, you're right. I'm a carpenter's son. Yeah, you're right. I'm Mary's son. Yep, I'm the guy that was preaching in the temple. Yep, I'm him. You, you, you got it. You got it. But they just, just, let's just try this one thing just for a moment. Why don't you take your nets... And throw them on the other side. Why don't you just try it and see? I think the scripture says it something like this. Why don't you try the goodness of God and see how good he really is? Why don't you try something different in your life than what you've been doing for 30 or 40 or 60 or 70 years? You never know what kind of fish, what the results would be once you pull it up. Once you see what God can do. So Peter, uh, Peter, so Simon is on the shore washing his nets. That's right. And Jesus said, stop washing your nets. Cast back out into the deep. That's right. Sometimes we need to just go back out yeah. where we were. That's right. Because where we were is where the blessings are at. That's right. We're comfortable standing on the seashore. Right. We're st comfortable standing where the water doesn't come above our, 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 our shoulders right. or our elbows or our nose. That's where we're comfortable at right. because we're in control there. But when you go yeah. back and you push back out where you were at, watch and see what God will do yeah. for you. Right. Well, I failed, bankrupt, I failed and I bankrupt twice or once. And I, I failed again and bankrupt a second time. And I did it again a third time. Well, let, what, let's see what the next seven years are going to be. And let's see what God can do this time. See, what we think is we are failures. And the reality of it is, is that we have so much more knowledge than what we had 21 years ago. So we have an understanding of what we can do, can't do, won't do, might not work. All right, we know that some things in church don't work. Let's rethink. Do things differently. No, I'm tired. I like the way things are. I don't want to fuck go. the system. I just like where I'm at in life. And I don't want to do anything different because I like coming to church at 1030 on Sunday. I like hearing the word of God and I like picking up and going home. Let's get into worship. 
I'm not saying that you don't. I'm just saying it's a different day. That's right. We need to get our fight back. Yeah, amen. 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 We need to get our joy back. Yeah. We need to get our vision back. Yeah. We need to get our enthusiasm back. Yeah. We need to get our strength back. Yeah. We need to get our spirit back. Yeah. We need to get our failures back. Our failures is what makes us, not our victories. Our failures make us better and equip us better than we've ever been before. You can do it. I can do it. Together we can do it. Listen, you have let your yesterday steal your today. Yesterday is gone. And yesterday is never coming back. And all you can look forward to is your victory for tomorrow. You say, Pastor, what are you talking about? I'm talking about that your spirit can leave while you are still washing your nets. That's right. Your spirit might not be there, but your body is. Jesus is about to do a disruption in Simon's life. Just when you think you're all done, God wants to step in and do something great in your life. Amen. He's going to upheaval in your life. God said, don't give up yet. He's about to do something that's going to blow your mind. He's going to do something in your life. It's not over till God says it's over. God wants you to go back, go deeper, launch out into the deep. I can't stand this child. He's crazy. I can't stand this man. He's got no sense. I saw that. Remember when you were in school, the teacher said, I have eyes everywhere. This woman ain't the same person I married. You know what? You need to go find your spirit, find out where it left you, and go get it and say, you know what? This thing is bigger than I am, but we're going to stick to this together and we're going to work through this. Watch this. Watch this. We need to go deeper in something that ain't working. I'll go deeper when it's good, but I'm not going to go deeper. I'm not going to sail out farther when things aren't going good. That's when you need to get out there and try it all over again. You've been married four times? Well, you need to be married a fifth time. Because the fifth time just might work. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Don't do that. <laughs> Who said six? I don't know. We'll just keep that whole day. Listen. Your greatest regret in life is that you didn't go deeper. Right. Watch this. Sister Donna, take me to, I think, verse number verse number five. Go take me to verse number five, and I think I want to go to eight and nine. Verse number five. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, thy word I will let down. Nevertheless. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. You've got to get this got to get this. Before Jesus was, oh, I'm sorry, before Simon was and his partners were out with their nets, right? right. Now they're washing their nets yeah. on land, right? right? Okay, now watch this. Get this. you got to get this. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. The net. The net. The net. In other words, what Simon was saying, excuse me while I pull up my pants, gravity is horrible under my age. So what Simon was saying is simply this. You're a carpenter's son. I don't know what you know about fishing, but you know what? Here's what I'll do. Just to please you and to make you happy, to show you that there ain't nothing out there, to show you that 
I'm going to do this because you told me to do it. I'm going to show you that there ain't nothing out there. I'm going to take my net. My net. I'm going to take my net sarcastically. And I'm going to show you that my nets that I just got done cleaning won't be, uh, that they'll be too much for the job. Because there's nothing out there. So I'll take my, I'll just do what you tell me to do, Pastor. Whatever. I'll, I'll please you just so that it'll make you happy. Just so that you can see that I'm doing things the way you have. I'll, I'll just do it. I'll just teach Sunday school class because that's the thing to do right now. You ain't got nothing else for me to do, so okay, fine. I'll just do it. That's not taking the Sister Lisa. Actually, we got a phenomenal girl in there right now with Sister Haley right now. She's doing a great job. Okay, I, I, I'll, I'll be in my marriage, but I'm going to be in it half-hearted. I'm going to be there just because you are the pastor. Don't reflect it on my wife. Just because you tell me to, I'm going to be uh, the, the minister, a licensed minister, just because that's what you tell I'm, I'm going to do it half-hearted. I'm going to take my net back out into the sea and show you that you don't really know what you're talking about. Uh -oh. Who said that? That's right. Who said that? Did you say that? That's what he was saying. That's right. And then something begins to happen. Uh -huh. Guess what? The word of Moses once isn't so bad after all. That's right. Maybe Moses isn't as dumb as we all thought he was. Maybe the word of Moses, your Sunday school teacher, your music director, Sister Heather, maybe you, uh, maybe your, our deacons, maybe they're not as dumb as we all thought they were. Maybe there's something to this, Jesus. Maybe there's more to you being a carpenter's son. Maybe there's more to you than just miracles. Maybe there's more to you than just a relationship. But nevertheless, at your word, I'm going to do it and be submissive and humble and do it because you asked me to do it. Come on, yes. And they take the net, the net, the net, and they take it out and they push it out into the deep. They go out in the deep and they bring in so many blessings. That's right. They do. They pull Forget the fish. But when they cast the net over on the other side, That's right. there are so many blessings that come yeah. into their lives That's right. because they were listened to what God told them to do. That's right. So, so Simon goes on. This plane's getting ready to land. So Simon goes on. And he tells Jesus, uh -huh. I'm paraphrasing, you know what? I know that you're the, that you are the, you are the carpenter's son, but you're more than just a carpenter's son. That's right. I'm having a whole new revelation. That's right. About who you really are. So, so Simon kneels at the feet of Jesus and repents because there's something about taking words from an authoritative figure and from authority that if we would just listen and obey Amen. and take care of the things that we need to take care of, Amen. don't do it this way, do it this way. There you go. Just, just hang tight. It, it's going to work out. All right. It's going to be all okay. Watch this. Watch this. And I, this isn't in my notes. Just because, and we're working with a situation. Nobody here in this church, so put your minds at ease. We're working with an individual that if they would just learn to give to God, all right. that God will in turn bless them. That's right. But listen. It can't be a one-time deal. No. It has to be a lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. 
So in other words, okay, God, I'm going to give this in return for you to bless me. That's fine. It doesn't work like that. No. That's not the way the seed works. The seed works. You plant the seed in the ground, and it takes a season to grow. It takes a season to come forth. You say, how long is the season? It could be years. It could be years before that season matures. Watch. Watch this. You want the blessings of God, and this is not in my notes. The blessings of God says that the first 10% is God's. That's it. Cut and dry. The kingdom says that if you want to be blessed, you need to give God his portion. Right. There is no rule. There is, there is no ifs, ands, buts about it. Right. The blessings are on you because you give me my first 10%. Right. That is mine. Right. Nobody needs to know about that. And that's nobody in this church. I'm just saying right. that the blessings, that is God's. Amen. The blessings come after the next 10%. Right. Whether it's 1% or 2% or 3%, that's where the blessings come. That's right. Now what you have to do is you have to stay focused. Now well, I'm going to stay with me. I'm 60 years old. I was able to draw my pension at age of 55. I was able to draw another pension at the age of 56, I think, or whatever it was. So it took me a lifetime of planting and growing a crop before I could pull and draw off of those two pensions. That's right. Come on. right. It took me a lifetime before I could say, God, it's, before God would say, you know what, it's time to go past the church. Let's go. That's right. Because I had to plant. I had to show myself faithful. I had to show myself faithful in church. In reading the word of God. I had to show myself faithful in dealing with people. I had to show myself faithful in raising my kids. I had to show myself faithful of being a good husband. I had to show myself faithful. I'm planting as I go. That's right. As I go. And I had the attitude at times. All right, God, you know what? Here's the deal. I'm just going to do this half-hearted. I'm 55 years old. I don't have a church yet. That's on you, not on me. I've been studying. I've been showing you, showing you, showing you, showing you. And what did God do? He said, I don't need to hear any of that. I've already got your future planned out. All i got to do is walk in the blessings that he's given to me at that moment. So what you do is, is you say, all right, God, here's, I'm going to put you to the test. I'm going to put you to the test. I know I only make $10 an hour, and that's uh, 40 hour a week, $400, $40 for ties. I know. I'm not preaching on ties. I'm talking about doing things half hearted. That's right. Uh -huh. uh -huh. So, what you have to do is you have to plan ahead of time and say, here it is, God. I'm going to plant the seed of making $80,000 a year. When you plant that seed and you are faithful at it for the kingdom of God, you will not see it next week or next month or next year. God will drop little blessings here and there. Yes, he will. Don't do it outside of your finances. And you watch God in 20 years. You watch God in 30 years when you're ready to retire. Right. And God says, you know what? It's time to retire. That's right. All that stuff that you put aside, that money that you planned, it's all coming back to you. It's all coming. It's all, all the blessings. It's all coming. Yes. All the blessings are coming back. That's right. All the blessings. Let's go, no, let's go somewhere else. I've been preaching for 30 minutes now. You want people to be kind to you? Right. You need to be kind to them. Right. How about doing something different, throwing your net on the other side? That's right. You want people to call you because you're sick? How about you calling them when they're sick? Yes. Yes. This is common sense, everyday stuff. When they're not, when they're not here, you want you want people to notice that you're not here. You call when they're not here. That's right. 
Throw your net. Launch out into the deep. That's right. Let's do it all over again. That's right. Because if the shallow end is not where your blessings are at. Oh, okay, that was a good one too. Thanks, God. You want you want to stay in the shallow? You can have shallow blessings. You want deep blessings? You got to get out in the deep. Well, the shallow is all I can handle because that's all I trust you with, God. It's up to my... Uh, do you know when they stepped in the river of Jordan, it was above their waist? Oh, yes. The water, it, was, it, was, it was the time of uh, 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 flooding. Yes, it was. It was the time of flooding. But when they stepped out into the water, the Jordan water crossing over into the promised land, they stepped up to their ankles and the water began to subside. Let's go one even farther. I know I gotta quit. I know I gotta quit. You gotta get this. When 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 the when the Israelites left Egypt, the water was above and beyond their heads. But when they stepped out in the water at ankle deep, the Red Sea parted. The blessings didn't come until they walked through the shallow, through the deep, into the shallow on the other sides. And then the blessings came because they were able to dance on the heads and the bodies of the Egyptians that walked up to the shore. Why did I say all of that? Because it's not time to do things half-hearted. There it is. There it is. It's time to do things with all of your mind, all of your strength, and all of your body. It's not time to quit. No. Brother Walter is 86 years old, 85 years old. Do you think that he has the attitude, it's time for me to quit? No. Nope. What else, God, can I do for you? There's yet more I can do for you. Brother Ron is 71 years old. God, what else can I do for you? What else is there that I can do for you to help the kingdom out? Praise God. Don't take your net out into the deep. Take everything you've got, everything. all your nets, all your people, all your stuff, all your cargo, all your fishing gear, everything, and go out and, and launch out into the deep. Yeah. That's right. Let's stand. All right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. <coughs> Love you, Jesus. Thank you for the message. Don't do things half-hearted. <laughs> I don't say you are. <laughs> Leo, don't do things half-hearted. No. Do it all in your mind, all in your strength. Get all in. That way God can bless you. All in. Because I guarantee you, watch this. There's going to be a time when you're going to need all of God. And because you've all been in, you can draw from some of that bank. Yes, you can. And you can draw from God and say, God, I've given you my life. I've given you my heart. I've given you my strength. I've given you my word. I've given you. I've given you. I've given you. I've given you. Brother Chad, come and close me down. Let's go. I know you're ready to close me down. In Jesus' name. We, 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 we give, give everything you've got. That's it. That's the way it Everything you've got. That's how you do it. I was telling Brother, I, I don't know who it was, Brother uh, Ir, Irvin, 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 the other day, I said, you know what my biggest downfall in pastoring is? My biggest downfall. I need to be better at follow-ups. When people are sick, I need to call them more. I need to visit them at the doors. I need to spend more time at Brother Ron's house. I need to be better at stuff. I can justify everything in my past. It doesn't matter. The bottom line is, am I doing it half-hearted with one net, or am I doing it with 
both of my necks, and everything about me is there. Brother Walter, when he was in the garden, he can't just plow half the field. No. He's got to plow the whole field all the way down. That's right. Because he wants 100% back of his yield that that garden gives. He's not going to get a return. If he only does 90%, that's the 10% he could have given God. And God said, okay, you only did 90. Give me the other 10. Now you only got 80 to work with. That's right. 